Shalom from Jerusalem. The war between Hamas and Israel is not confined to these two parties. It has regional implications for Lebanon and Syria, Egypt and Jordan, and the repercussions do not stop there, with great power competition reflected in American military and diplomatic moves and in Russian and Chinese counter moves. What is the geostrategic dimension of the war which erupted on October 7th? How is it helping shape the war? And is the war going to have a significant impact on it? To help us analyze all these matters, we're joined from Germany by retired General Klaus Naumann, who is the former Bundeswehr Chief of General Staff and Chairman of NATO's Military Committee. Thank you for joining us, General. Pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure having you indeed. Also joining us is retired Brigadier General Mark Kimmett, who is the former Assistant Secretary of State for Political and Military Affairs in the United States. Thank you for joining us as well, General. Thank you. With me here in the studio, as ever, our TV7 editor at large, Mr. Amir Oren. Amir, give us a broader understanding of the latest developments. Obviously, we've discussed this matter already, and we will continue to discuss this matter as the various events evolve. Nevertheless, at this moment in time, what should we focus on? So, obviously, as we are speaking now, uh, the central event of the day is uh, President Biden's uh, visit to Israel, especially, but also to the region in general, convening a conference with uh, Jordanian, Egyptians, and Palestinians. We have, of course, to see uh, whatever comes out of it, how it will impact the Israeli preparations for a ground offensive uh, into Gaza if uh, Hamas does not uh, give up and uh, relocate its leadership, um, which now looks a remote possibility, but sometimes diplomacy um, has its way. And there are, of course, uh, universal uh, lessons here to be learned, which uh, the two generals uh, can uh, elaborate on regarding intelligence, the relationship between intelligence, policy, command and control. How do you recover from a surprise attack when you lose your equilibrium? Uh, these are professional lessons, but they can also have an impact on the decisions of your adversaries. If they believe that uh, you are weak or that you have weak points which can be exploited, and perhaps the whole concept of deterrence has to be reevaluated because if your enemy does not act and you believe that he was deterred, but it turned out that he had something else in mind, perhaps you should uh, change the entire doctrine of deterrence. Indeed, and of course, leadership also comes into play in this of matter. Course. Following up on statements made, something that there is some question uh, being deliberated uh, in multiple holes about whether or not the resolve is truly there. But I'd like to start with you, General uh, uh, Nauman. When we're looking at the broader picture, can correlations be... Uh, be drawn out from the current conflict here in Israel to the conflict in Russia, for instance, and even more holistically to the strategic great power competition since 2021. We've been already talking about this. The fact of the matter is China and the United States are competing on multiple levels with support actors being Russia on the one hand, vis-a-vis -vis China, of course, and Europe vis-a-vis -vis the United States. To what degree are we seeing this all evolve within that con uh, context? Well, the uh, drama in Israel and in Gaza has a severe impact on the situation in Ukraine, since uh, the people in Ukraine are full of fear that international attention will shift away from uh, the war against Russia uh, to the Middle East, and uh, they all know that the main supporter and the real source of uh, resistance for the Ukrainians is the support by the United States of America. That's definitely one consequence which makes Putin smile when he is sitting at the conference in Beijing right now. Uh, the other impact, I think, is <clears throat> that uh, the promising events which we saw unfolding between Israel and the main Arab partners like Saudi Arabia 
uh, seem to be derailed for the time being, and that is a uh, has a, a, a global implication. Since uh, you may remember that at the recent G20 meeting, they, were, they launched an initiative uh, of reaching India, the Middle East, and Europe in a new economic uh, and strategic linkage that it seems to be derailed for the time being. And then, uh, of course, we have the direct implications in the situation in the Middle East, the competition between the uh, Arab states led by Saudi Arabia and Iran. And Iran, who is undoubtedly at least, uh, let's say, uh, a mastermind behind this uh, events in Gaza uh, seems now to be in a situation which may give them more possibilities than they had before. This would be, from my perspective, four points which uh, answer perhaps your question of the global implications. Indeed. General Kimmett, your take on this? Well, first of all, I think General Nauman is entirely correct. Uh, it was very interesting. A year ago, uh, everybody was saying, let's see how China tries to take advantage of the situation in Ukraine. And part of the effort being uh, exercised by the United States at that time was to try to demonstrate that there is peril to China if they try to take advantage of the situation uh, in Ukraine by the movements towards uh, Taiwan. Uh, oddly enough, uh, China hasn't taken advantage of the situation, but it certainly seems as if Iran has tried to take advantage of the situation. I think all of us understand that Hamas would not have done this on their own, uh, would not have carried this operation out with its own capabilities, and would not have done this without the strategic direction of Iran. So I think one of the reasons that Joe Biden is sending so many assets into this region is to send a very clear message to Iran that uh, their opportunistic opportunity here to try to uh, take advantage of the American situation in Ukraine, uh, I think he's trying to say, as he did the other night, no, don't try it. Uh, Remarkably, though, now that the United States is embroiled both in Ukraine and potentially here in Gaza, one has to answer, now what will the Chinese do? Indeed, it's a good question. Indeed, of course, it was to be expected, as General Nauman noted, uh, the interconnector from India through the Middle East to Europe would have had severe implications to the Belt and Road Initiative that Ch the Chinese are so eager to advance throughout uh, these various continents. Uh, ultimately, if we look also at uh, the, the various actors in play, China is heavily invested in the Islamic Republic of Iran, $400 billion for a duration of 25 years, something that it wants to also see a return on. So obviously to see the situation destabilize needs to have clear objectives, clear strategic obje objectives for that matter. And then Israel, of course, being within this context, a clear um, not, I don't want to use as a, a proxy to the United States necessarily, but it's a clear ally which uh, relies on U.S. support and advances U.S. interest throughout this region. Well, Jonathan, I have it uh, on a good source, namely yourself, that uh, ever since this conflict uh, started, viewership of this program and others uh, has multiplied a lot. Nevertheless, uh, I'm willing to confess, uh, even though it's not only a, a select quality audience, but a wide one, that we are in the business of speculation. We don't really know uh, the facts regarding the uh, decision by the Hamas leadership to do it now. The fact that they probably planned it for a long time and waited uh, for the right opportunity is obvious. But why now? Why all of a sudden on October the 7th? And perhaps if we go into cause and effect, what we talked about a minute ago regarding, for instance, the Israeli-Saudi normalization with Prime Minister Netanyahu 
boasting in the United Nations that the Palestinians will not have a veto over the process. Perhaps that was an impetus for Hamas to show that, yes, they do have at least uh, an effort uh, to have a veto uh, by force. Now, uh, Netanyahu meant the Palestinian Authority, the relative moderates. He didn't mean the extremists. But nevertheless, it uh, may be, and we will probably find out sometimes later, historians will, if not intelligence analysts, whether Iran pushed Hamas to do it right now in order to derail, as General Nauman said, the Israeli-Saudi track. General Nauman, two months ago, uh, we met in Helsinki, Finland, for a panel uh, of our Jerusalem Studio program, which you're uh, a regular panelist on. And you noted uh, in the presence of three foreign ministers from the Netherlands, from Poland, and from uh, Croatia, that from a, a, an experience of dealing with one crisis, every country will now have to deal with two, three, four crises and will have to be challenged on multiple fronts. Sadly, your analysis was spot on, and we're seeing this now in the beginning, at least, evolving into multiple crises on the international stage. To what degree do you see this now within context of a strategic power competition to challenge Western governments to contend with? Well, I think the... The old traditional way, or the, as I often say, the happy old days of the Cold, uh, Cold War, uh, but I was accustomed to handling one crisis at a time. These times are gone forever. But they will never return. Our governments have to, have to be prepared for handling two, three crises simultaneously, some interlinked and intertwined, and in all these crises, they have to take into account that there's the one iron rule in crisis management, and Mark Kemet knows it pretty well from his time in shape. Um, that, and that rule is time is of the essence. If you do not succeed in overcoming the initial necessity to react, by gaining the initiative, you're lost. And uh, that is, is something which our governments need to understand. And they need to understand as well that in future crises, reaction will no longer suffice to do the job. We have to be prepared to act preventively uh, from time to time. And that means to act before the first shot has been fired. Indeed. Nevertheless, those have uh, far-reaching implications on public opinion, uh, which is also something that needs to be contended with, uh, especially now when uh, there are various rallies of uh, support for Islamist terrorists. Uh, to my deep uh, regret uh, in Western societies that obviously have also uh, certain pressure on uh, certain governments uh, when we're talking about the long run and po political implications for those governments within democratic societies. Uh, General Kimmel, I'd like to hear your position on this as well. Obviously, uh, you and General Nauman know each other, also served uh, with each other uh, at some point. Uh, but when we look at the big picture, now we see the Biden administration basically delaying Israel's military invasion into Gaza, trying to uh, uh, receive assurances <clears throat> excuse me, from the state of Israel not to attack uh, Lebanon, Hezbollah, unless it is attacked first, even though we do see under war threshold attacks being repeatedly taken by the Hezbollah and uh, Iranian proxies, uh, including from Palestinian camps in Lebanon. How does that align with what is best from a military perspective? Well, first of all, I think you've got to go back into American history and realize that we have always been a little late to the game. We weren't ready for Pearl Harbor. We weren't ready for Korea. Uh, America's first battles are usually lost. We have the luxury because we're fundamentally an island nation that we've got the time to be able to react on our own uh, timelines at a place and time of our own choosing. That, that is not the case 
uh, in present circumstances. I think in this case, President Biden is using sort of the old American axiom of don't rush to failure so that uh, if, in fact, this does evolve uh, outside the boundaries of Egypt and uh, Israel and Gaza, that at least the preparation for that war outside of the immediate is taken to, into account. Everybody understands uh, the situation. And if necessary, America would be ready to react. Uh, they talk about America being the sleeping giant. Um, well, you don't want to wake it up too quickly but you don't want to let it sleep either. So I think President Biden is doing the right thing. If he's going to be committing American forces and American assets into this war, I think he wants to be able to tell the American people that he has done everything in his power to ensure that uh, he's done everything in his power to avoid that and localizing this fight simply into uh, Israel and Gaza. And that's not simple in and of itself. Indeed. Uh, Mr. Owen? I wonder how um, you two generals um, can talk about the tension between professional military doctrine and the political dimension of strategy, because uh, we all remember that right after the Yom Kippur War, uh, General Depew at uh, Tradoc uh, and uh, his uh, associates wrote uh, FM 100, wasn't that uh, the field manual, and win the first battle in order to prevent what, what you, Mark, uh, just, uh, just said regarding losing the first battles. However, if you prevent a catastrophe, you cannot convince the public that it would have happened had you not done it. And if you can't convince the public, you don't have support for what you have done and what you are going to do. How, how do you balance these two uh, constraints? General Nauman. That is one of the famous $1,000 questions in real political life. Uh, I think one instrument is, first of all, to note that strategy is, as it was yesterday, is today even more uh, the capability to use all instruments of policy in a coordinated and uh, well-orchestrated way. Uh, other Western governments are occasionally a little, a little weak on that. Um, secondly, whatever you do, you need to take your people behind your action. You need to inform them as early as possible. And that is occasionally uh, a contradiction to uh, the military principle to surprise an opponent if possible. But without public support, uh, you cannot cope with the power of the pictures, which are one of the, ma of the characteristics of today's warfare. Whatever will happen will be televised on the screens. And if the people are not prepared to what they see, you will lose support. And I think that is one of the one of the big challenges for Israel in the present situation. And whatever will happen in Gaza, the images will not be very nice. Mm. And to to win public opinion to support this and to make them aware that Israel will do whatever it can do to respect international law and to comply with it. I think that's one of the challenges of the uh, forthcoming operation. Also, not to forget that there is a very big campaign of disinformation uh, being uh, promoted not only by Qatar through its mouthpiece Al Jazeera, but also other bad actors throughout this region, which are uh, poised on making uh, Israel look bad in the eyes of the international community, with uh, one of the goals, of course, uh, limiting its capacity uh, to eliminate uh, Iran's uh, uh, personal interests for regional hegemony and so on and so forth. Uh, but uh, I'd like also to hear, General Kimmett, your take on this. Well, uh, this, this whole notion of uh, ensuring that you've got your population on your side before you kick off the war uh, is exactly right, uh, because uh, it's important to also understand that even if you have them 
with you at the beginning, you'll probably lose them over time. We saw that in, in Iraq. We saw that in Afghanistan. But General Bra Nauman brings up a very important point, which is the power of the media and the power of the cell phone to uh, not only report, but also manipulate the views of the war. Uh, we haven't even started a war. There hasn't even been a war started yet in Israel uh, against Gaza. And you've already got the American academic institutions uh, completely uh, on the side of Palestine and are already accusing Israel of war crimes and the war hasn't even started. So uh, it, it's, it must be enormously frustrating for Israel who will go out of their way to abide by the most narrow conventions of law of of land combat and adhere to them precisely yet see massive violations of them by your opponent uh, but at the same time it is your opponent through its mouthpieces not only in al jazeera but in every uh, ivy league institution that we have in america that will condemn you for what are legitimate and appropriate reactions and actions you're taking for the defense of your people and the defense of your nation. And therefore, counterintelligence is also very important. Concerning the fact, uh, I know that uh, former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo uh, was very, very vocal about uh, both Chinese investments in the higher institutions as well as uh, the Arab Gulf states' investments in higher institutions, which ultimately uh, causes a lot of uh, challenges, uh, to say the least, when we're talking about narratives being promoted within that context. Uh, General Kimmett? Well, well, I would just say that apparently that investment has paid off for them, because if you look at uh, the amount of rhetoric and the amount of demonstrations that are coming out of our, uh, our Ivy League campuses and elsewhere, it's just absolutely stunning that people can have these beliefs, promote these beliefs, and think that somehow they're logical, uh, it, it just demonstrates what a bubble our academic institutions are in, and candidly, the kind of propaganda that is imposed on our students, uh, as exhibited by 50 different clubs coming together at Harvard and signing a petition against uh, what we're seeing on the ground right now. Indeed. Also, the uh, as long as they don't control West Point, Annapolis, right. and Colorado Springs, that, not that's, yet. That's a completely separate issue. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Well, uh, I'd like to point out one more thing. Eighteenth uh, October uh, does uh, signify the first sunset, or not the first, but uh, a significant sunset in which the Islamic Republic of Iran will now be able to proliferate um, ballistic missiles uh, to its liking without any. Uh, checks on their balances without any challenges or hinders, and uh, really uh, ratchet up uh, this project, which is one of the four pillars uh, necessary to establish nuclear weapons. Uh, we have obviously only three left uh, minutes left for this uh, panel, and therefore, General Nauman, your take on this? Yeah, well, we we see a proliferation of ballistic missiles. We see uh, uh, an incredible threat to Israel's security. Uh, particularly from the north, where I think, as far as I know, uh, 150,000 missiles are more or less pointed at Israel, uh, more than uh, one would need to set away every uh, air defense system. And as long as this uh, proliferation of missiles goes on, uh, we will have no security. And that's also true for a country like Germany. Uh, let's take the example of this. Uh, negotiations between uh, Iran and uh, a couple of Western countries who neglected simply the Iran threat by missiles. They focused on nuclear capabilities. The missiles were not part of the uh, of discussions. But the missiles are there and they can threaten European countries right now. For that reason, I think we have to find ways to cope with an ever-growing missile threat, it is a danger for all of our societies. Indeed, this was, of course, part of the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, the 2015 Nuclear Agreement, so-called, uh, in which the Obama administration, alongside its uh, 
proclaimed ambitions to lead the world from behind uh, has also decided that it separates every issue to try and deal with one portion of the Iranian issue rather than dealing with it comprehensively. Today we're obviously dealing with the ramifications of the unwillingness to deal with that. Uh, General Kimmett, your take on that? Well, I think the most important thing for uh, defense manufacturers is it has become apparent that AI will significantly help in the detection and the targeting of swarm attacks, as we saw come from Hamas, uh, where you use multiple dozens, if not hundreds of missiles at the same time. The problem that still needs to be solved is even if you can detect it, even if you can target it, we still don't have a cheap, uh, rapidly producible, rapidly uh, reinforceable capability to shoot them all down. The anti-missile, the cheap anti-missile has yet been developed. Uh, and as long as we have cheap to produce missiles and rockets that will be proliferated, that technology will, which will be proliferated by Iran, there needs to be some sort of way to shoot these down uh, when they come in swarms. And that's the tactic we'll see from this point on. Mr. Owen? General Nauman said that we are, we are not going back to the happy, quote unquote, days of the Cold War. But except for one notion, containment, what we are trying to do right now in the Middle East is contain the conflict to Israel versus Hamas only. Indeed. Well, this is all the time that we have for today. I'd like to thank General Nauman, General Kimmett, and Mr. Olin for being part of today's panel. And I'd like to thank all of you at home as well. Until next time. Shalom. For more of TV7's productions and editorials, we invite you to visit our website at www.tv7israelnews.com.